Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial. And in this lesson, we're going to start the first of sort of a two-part lesson on effects. And in this lesson, we're going to start out by talking about basic transitions, meaning dissolves in your timeline. Now, believe it or not, there's actually a few different variants on dissolves, meaning there's dip to colors, flash to white, there's film fades, film transitions, and it might not be readily apparent where you have the ability to actually just get in and start adding these effects to your timeline. So in this lesson, I'm going to show you how the ability to do that is actually already there. You probably just don't even know you have access to it. And we're really going to go in depth and I'm going to show you everything you need to know on how to manipulate your transitions to get them to look exactly the way that you need them to look quickly and easily inside of your Media Composer timeline. All right, now, before we get rolling, I do always want to give a big shout out and a big thanks to our sponsor, Video Guys. You know I always talk about them. They are your source. If you're looking for Media Composer subscription licenses, you can check out the show notes below to find the links for the version of Media Composer that you're looking to get the subscription for. Don't forget to use that coupon code of MC101 to get 5% off your license purchase, purchasing it through Video Guys. And I also want to remind you that if you do like this tutorial, you like this tutorial series, please don't forget to like and subscribe to these tutorials. I want to make sure that you guys are aware every time new tutorials come out, I try to produce them. I try to do every Friday. Sometimes it's every Thursday or every Saturday, but I try to get them out every Friday so that you have the weekend to sit down, watch them, take in as much as you can. So please help like, subscribe, and share these across social media so that we get the word out there about Avid Media Composer. And last but certainly not least, I want to remind you that if you or your team are looking for one-on-one -on -one personalized Media Composer training, don't forget, you can always send an email to kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. I record all of the lessons we do. I customize them specifically for what you or your team are looking for. And I make sure that when we're done, there's never any questions about what you wanted covered. We get right down to the nuts and bolts of it so that you get everything done you need to get done in Media Composer to keep that workflow on track. All right, so I think that's a good place to leave off for the introduction. Let's just jump into Media Composer and let's get started. All right, now, as you can see, we are an Avid Media Composer already and we're talking about basic transitions. Now, there are basically three basic transitions when it comes to your editing timeline. You're gonna have the cut, you'll have a dissolve, and you will have a wipe. Now, to be honest, 95% of the time or 98% of the time with wipes, you're just dragging and dropping them onto a transition point like a cut. It will apply whatever the fancy wipe is and then you're good to go. Now in this lesson, what we're going to do is basically talk about how to apply basic transitions like dissolves, like dip to colors, meaning like a flash to white and transitions like that, because it's not readily apparent inside of Media Composer how you're actually going to get to these transitions. So before we talk about that, I should probably introduce you to the effects palette. Now to get to the effects palette, quite simple, command or control an eight on the keyboard, whether you are on Mac and Windows, Mac or Windows, and you will see here, I'm not going to click on all, but I have a few third party effects packages here from Boris effects, Boris continuum. So you may not have these effects right off the bat. Chances are what you're going to start out with is the blend category. Now, believe it or not, in our next lesson, we're going to talk about the blend category. We're going to talk about one effect specifically, the 3D warp effect. But what I want to draw your attention to is the fact that if you start clicking through, you're going to notice that you really don't have access to any basic transitions. I mean, we have some wipes here you know, some sawtooth wipes, but what we want to get access to is just the basic transition, a basic dissolve. So how do we actually do that? Well, believe it or not, you actually already have access to it. You just don't know it yet. What I'm going to do, command shift and equals, control shift and we control shift and equals for all of my Windows friends out there. I'm going to head to my user settings. I'm just going to come down to my keyboard settings and I want to draw your attention right over here to the backslash key on the keyboard. You will notice that as I hover over, I am told that this is the standard keyboard shortcut for a quick transition. So what exactly is a quick transition? Well, let's talk about it right now. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to come down to here. Let's just put our effect in right here. 
and you'll see why I picked this transition in just a second. So let's talk about that quick transition. So to apply it fairly self-explanatory, I'm simply gonna hit backslash on the keyboard. Now what's important to keep in mind, and you'll notice that as I do that, if you take a look at the actual edit point, I'm just gonna sort of move the time bar away from it and hit that quick transition again, you'll notice that what Media Composer has done is actually highlight the transition point or the cut point that we're going to add our quick transition to. Now, if I had my other track selected, it would have chosen more than just video track one. However, inside of the quick transition window, you actually have the ability to simply add those layers in as well. If you hypothetically, let's just say I forgot, I wanted to make sure I added it to V1 as well or, or audio track one. I could do that right here from within the quick transition window. Now, I'm not gonna do that for the purposes of showing this to you. It's fairly self-explanatory. If we're gonna apply it to one layer, we have multiple, layer, multiple layers selected. We hit the quick transition. It's gonna apply them to all of them, all right? But what I do want to start out with is showing you that the quick transition tool is more than just a one trick pony because you might be thinking, well, I see, you know, I can just add a dissolve. Well, you actually have the ability to add much more than just a standard dissolve here. You'll see that if I drop this down, here is where we have the ability to add dissolves, film dissolves and fades. Now, if you're not familiar with the film dissolves and fades, that's where you're actually fading luminance values first as opposed to just a basic you know, transition from one shot to the other. I always call it like the Star Wars effect when you see the two suns and everything starts fading out and you see those two suns up there in the distance right till the very end. That's what you're gonna get into when you get into film fades and film dissolves. Now, of course, we have a fade to color. We have a fade from color and my personal favorite one, the dip to color. And if hypothetically you are working in a stereoscopic program or app, uh, stereoscopic project, you do have the ability to get in and add stereoscopic 3D depth transitions as well. But for the purpose of this lesson, I'm really going to focus on two of them. I'm going to focus on the dissolve. I'm going to focus on the dip to color. All right. So as you can see here, fairly self-explanatory. It's a dissolve. It's going to be centered on the cut. 24 frames because I am in a 23976 frame per second project and because it's centered it's going to start 12 frames before it's going to end 12 frames after fairly self-explanatory if I wanted to add this I could simply say add now we're pretty much at the point now where we've gone past having to add and render that was really back in the days where you might have you know 20 effects stacked on top of each other you had to worry about rendering in most cases all you need to do is to simply say add you will see that the transition has been added to your timeline and it's all set to go. Now, if hypothetically I wanted to get in and adjust the duration of this transition because I had it as a second, maybe I only need it to be like half a second. A couple ways that you can do that. You can remove the effect and apply it again, or you've heard me talk in previous lessons about effects mode. So let me talk a little bit more about effects mode right now. Now, there's a couple ways that you can get into effects mode. I have it mapped on my keyboard as Shift and Y, but you can also find it right here. Now, as you get rolling, you're really going to see that having that effects mode shortcut mapped onto your keyboard is going to be exceptionally important just as a time saver. For example, perfect example, let's go into effects mode, Shift and Y, and you'll see that what that does is call up the effect editor. Now, an effect can be anything. It could be a transition. It could be a position change, scale change, it could be a fancy effect, it could be a glow, it could be a lens flare, it could really be anything. But we're starting out with basics here, and you'll see that as I drag through the actual effect itself, I can see it updating over there in the composer window as the time bar moves, and I can also see that opacity bar dragging as I go. Now for me, because I wanted to shorten this up, it's actually quite simple. And you'll notice again, really not much stuff in the effect editor. We'll get into effects that have a lot more parameters in our next lesson. So what I want to do is just cut this transition in half. Now I know that half of one second in a 24 frame per second project is going to be 12 frames. As soon as I hit 12, you'll see that that immediately updates and is now good to be a half a second transition. Very nice. All right. But Let's now take this a little bit further, one step further. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to add a white flash in there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this effect. Now, you're going to start to see that I mentioned in what I have as, you know, keyboard shortcuts a few lessons back, how this really now starts to come into play. I have Shift and Y mapped as the keyboard shortcut for effects mode. I have F5 mapped to remove effect. You'll see now, this is why I've now gotten into having these as keyboard shortcuts because there's something I utilize 
all the time all right so again quick transition all I'm gonna do is simply drop this down come down to dip to color I'm gonna make it five frames now the only problem is is that by default the dip to color is a dip to black but again much like we had done before I'm just simply gonna step into effects mode I'm gonna come in I'm gonna double click on the background color switch it to white say okay close that window come back and hit play and there's our flash to white now with that said let's take this concept one step further let's say that I wanted to add that dip to white to all of these transitions all right what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove that effect and I'm going to mark an in point here and an out point here around the range of shots that I'd like to add that dip to white to all right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back I'm going to do the quick transition and again I'm going to come down to dip to color and what I'm going to do this time is I'm just going to pass all of this here because I already know how all of this works. I'm going to come down to apply to all transitions in to out. And you'll see that you even have the ability to skip any existing transition effects that you already have in your timeline. Now, this does, of course, bring up a very common problem. As soon as I say add, what's happened here? It's dipped to black. It's dipped to black. It's dipped to, uh, oh my God, it's all got all these dipped to black. So now I'm going to have to step in and step in and step we don't want to do any of that so let me show you a great little trick here what I'm gonna do is just undo what I did and I'm gonna undo it one more time to get me back to my flash to white now what I'm about to show you works with any effect and you're gonna see more about this in the next lesson but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna step back into effects mode and you'll notice that inside of the effect editor I actually have the effect icon right here in the upper left hand corner as I move the mouse over it you're gonna see that my little finger appears which gives me the ability anytime I see that finger it means that I can drag something from one place to another so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag this effect out and into my graphics bin what I've now done is created a preset of this dip to white so now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna apply this to each transition now you can do it one of two ways you can simply grab and drag grab and drag grab and drag or what you have the ability to do, and I'm just going to undo that a few times here, is if I step back into effects mode here, shift and Y, I'm just going to move the effect editor out of the way here. I'll put it right there and you'll see why in just a second. What I'm now going to do is click on the edit point and hold shift and I'm going to keep selecting. And what I'm going to do when I have all of the transitions, and of course I missed that one there, that's fine. There we go. Okay. Once I got all the ones that I want, and let's we should probably do the last one too. I've got them all selected. Now all I'm going to do is simply double click on dip to color and boom, that flash to white is now in there in every transition. And the beauty part is, is that if you like to make a whole bunch of a different, you know, let's say you always have the same, you know, uh, dip to color that you use every time or a, f you know, fade down to black or something like that. And you want to take them and make them as effect presets you can easily take them and put them into a bin and use them anytime that works the same with any effect inside of media composer all right okay so let's now take this one step further what I'm gonna do is just remove this effect and let's just go back to our basic dissolve transition I'm just gonna hit quick transition backslash on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stretch this back out to be like you know 24 frames and I want to show you that even though down here we have the ability to adjust the position to be ending and you'll see it gives me a visual representation centered on the cut starting at the cut we even have the ability to do a custom one and say maybe I want this to happen like you know three frames before the edit you'll see that I can do like six frames before the edit you'll see it update in real time right below or what you can actually do is just grab that transition effect and tell media composer exactly where you want it to start in your transition just like such now again I'm all about taking things one step further what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna center this up I think I'm gonna stretch it out to be let's stretch it out to be 48 frames just so this is gonna be a little bit easier for me to show you down here in the timeline what I'm gonna do is just zoom in on that section of the timeline command and M control and M for all my Windows friends and I'm just gonna select the range that I want to zoom in on like such and it centers it up for me which is very nice what I'm also gonna do here is just set that to be the standard layout just because I don't need my auto tracks being that large 
And now what I want to show you is the ability to manipulate this transition directly in the timeline. So how would we go about doing this? Well, you might be thinking, well, you can go back to effects mode, shift and Y on the keyboard. Well, you could do it that way, but I'd really rather be more visual in how I do this. So how am I going to go about doing this? Let me show you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate up to this shortcut right here called, shockingly enough, transition manipulation. And once I select it, do you see what's happened down here? I've now gotten these little squares at the end of my transition. You'll see not there and now there. What I now have the ability to do is to grab any point of the transition and start actually making adjustments to it in the timeline and then get a visual representation of exactly what is happening with the incoming shot and the outgoing shot visually in where the composer window used to be. We can grab that starting frame of the transition or I can grab the ending frame of the transition like this. So we can really get in and make this a custom transition very visually in our timeline. And I also want to draw your attention to a concept that we haven't talked about that's still a few lessons away and that is trimming. As soon as I got in and started manipulating this transition, you're going to notice that the trim tool actually became active. So you might be thinking, well, why did the trim tool become active? Well, the reason the trim tool became active is because what I now have the ability to do is to actually grab the transition from here and start adjusting like this so that we can then get in and readjust the dissolve however we need to do it all dynamically in our timeline to get the transition to work however we need it to work. All right. Now, to be honest, I could sit around and play with this for hours just because it's such an in-depth tool and it's such an in-depth and visual way to work, especially for people when you're getting into those film fades and you've got certain parts of the shot that you want to keep up for a certain amount of time and you want to get in and really manipulate the in and out points of your dissolves. This is a really cool way and a really simple way to get in and visually see exactly what you want to do in the timeline as opposed to mucking around with it inside of an effect editor or inside of a you know, inside of any other window, you can see it visually in the timeline and then get that great view of showing you the incoming and outgoing frames to get those transitions looking exactly the way that you need to every time. Now, as always, I want to give a big thanks to our sponsor, Video Guys. Don't forget, if you're looking for those Media Composer subscriptions, head on down to the show notes below. Click on those links. Use the coupon code of MC101 to get that 5% discount. They have an awesome support team there. If you ever run into issues, you can always hit them up and get all of those questions answered. And please, if you like this tutorial, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it across social media to help all the editors who are trying to jump into Media Composer, Premiere, and Resolve to get those. And don't worry, Final Cut Pro editors, I didn't forget you. And even Final Cut editors, I want you guys to be able to jump in here as well to get the most out of these tutorials so that you can quickly do what you need to do inside of Avid Media Composer with little to no learning curve. And last but certainly not least, if you have any questions, you can always send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. Thanks a lot for watching.